Hello and welcome to Casual Shenanigans Gaming, a podcast all about DayZ, Battlefield, and everything PC gaming. I am one of your hosts, Germ Gaming, also known as Jeremiah, and tonight I am joined by only one other host. I am joined by Dave. Hey guys, I'm Dave, the not-so-evil Evil Viking 13. There can be only one. Everyone else is uh, indisposed this evening um, with things like volleyball matches. Yes, that's how <laughs> cool everyone is. Um, so anyway, it's okay. We're just going to have a, a quiet, intimate podcast, just the two of us. Uh, I'm not and, sure if I'm up to that. <laughs> well, uh, anyway, it'll be good. Don't worry about it. All right, so... Uh, since the last time we podcasted, a lot of stuff has happened for both Battlefield yes. and DayZ. Uh, you may have seen, if you haven't seen, go check out our first casual conversation. The super catchy and interesting name we gave to uh, non-podcasts, but things that still involve all of us. Um, and we watched the first DayZ blog video. I, th- I think it's the first, isn't it? The yeah, it is the one? first. Yeah, it's the first video. Uh, so go check that out on our channels if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but we watched through the video and talked over Rocket because our thoughts are are so much more interesting, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so we just talk over them the whole video and, and watch it together. And terrible, it's a lot of fun. terrible people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, there's been two blog updates for Daisy, and there's been a lot of new Battlefield stuff. So we're going to start with Daisy as usual. And as usual, we are turning things over to the master of Daisy, Dave. So, Dave, what's new? All right, well, we got all kinds of fun stuff going on. And, you know, actually mentioning the video, uh, Yakko had not seen that yet. And I showed him the video for the first time uh, today. He's like, oh, there's a video out. I hadn't seen it yet. And now he is, like, completely over the top, excited like the rest of us. I'm like, all right, congratulations, really? Yakko. You can you can now suffer and wait with the rest of us. Well, we need him to join the crew. Like, we need more people. Yeah, I, th- I think he really enjoyed the mod. It's just that... It, like he's so used to polished games, the glitches just really turned him off. Like he wanted to enjoy it, but you know, right. th- there was just a, a barrier to the, to the enjoyment part. Well, that's very understandable. There were plenty of glitches to choose from. Yeah, I, I think I got to the point where I was just so in love with the core idea of the mod that like things could have gone downhill with all the patches last year. I would have been like, no, just I'll keep playing. It's it's okay. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> we know. You. Don't worry. Yeah, we're yeah. we're we're aware. <laughs> anyway, like, on to today's blog update. Um, well, why don't we start of... with the, why don't we start with the older one, the one from last week? Oh yeah, we hadn't really talked about that in the podcast, have we? Yeah, yeah, I think it would be good to start with that one. Well, geez, Jeremiah, make me scroll down and stuff. Sorry, we're prepared, guys. Don't worry. It's like a massive mouse scroll noise on my audio feed now. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Yes, because that's the worst noise on your audio feed. <laughs> Everything's don't... on your audio feed. I hear. I hear animals on branches outside your windows on your audio feed and your stupid jet engine of a computer. Actually, I think I've got the squirrel in the attic again. <laughs> so if you hear like, like scrambling noises, it's probably just me grabbing the 22 and going after him. Anyway, so you, the 22, you have so many guns. Like, well, you, I mean, he's, he's in the attic. <laughs> so he's a vermin. Was that uh, what speaking you of which, I, If an intruder I, gets I, in your house, well, he's in the <laughs> house. Got to use the house gun. The house gun for intruders is the AR-15. That's what ah. all the flashlight and laser gadgets are for. Why? Because you're trying to shoot through your neighbor's house, too? Okay, I, I'm going to link you <laughs> to the article. Soft tip 223 or 556 five, penetrates less interior walls than buckshot. All right. I would like to read that article, actually. It, it's actually, like, I totally did not believe that until I saw it for myself. I was like, no I would way. like. I'd like to see how it compares to uh, birdshot, because birdshot's what I keep in my shotgun. Now, yeah, birdshot probably penetrates a little bit more, but the interesting, interesting thing about the um, the soft tip five five six or, or two two three in the AR fifteen is like as soon as it hits sheetrock, it like it fragments, and so by the time it hits that second sheet of sheetrock, it's it's basically like like birdshot, like a small amount of birdshot. My brother and I did a test last uh, weekend. He has a little three eighty um, Smith and Wesson bodyguard, and he got a couple different types of defense ammo for it, and we found like a 2000 page parts catalog um, for a mechanical shop. Yeah. And so we just set it up and we decided to see how many pages would each type of bullet go through. Um, and the best one was like this steel core defense ammo that fragments <laughs> and still has like a, a steel tip spike thing on the inside. And that went through like 1200 pages. That sounds really irresponsible to carry. That, that is not a good idea. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, he tried out a couple different ones. I forget which one he right, decided right. he was going to carry, but they all actually kind of mushroomed to about the same size. There wasn't that much of a difference, but anyway, uh, <laughs> we like you notice how, guns. You notice, how, you notice how when it's just the two of us, we instantly start talking about guns in like three minutes flat. Because guns are so cool. <laughs> uh, to go ahead and just continue the rabbit trail for just one more second, I've actually been practicing my, my real life sniping, trying to get these stupid squirrels out of the attic. <laughs> <laughs> I got this like little little Savage Arms twenty two long rifle with like a, a Tasco Walmart scope on it, right? Uh huh. Managed to chase one of the squirrels out of the attic and got it to go up one of the, the big pine trees in my backyard. And you know, not to brag or anything, but I took it with a headshot at about forty yards from across the yard. Off Pretty the tree good. Bridge. That reminds me. Uh, I shouldn't say what state we live in because I'm technically talking about a crime, but um, several <laughs> this is, years guys, ago. Guys, this is how you know when a good story is about to start is when you have like the legal preface. So, you know, um, some states have state birds. I think actually every state has a state bird, don't they? I oh don't gosh, know. gosh, where's the story going? Our state has a state bird. Well, here's the thing. The state bird for our state is a stupid little demon bird, <laughs> and they're stupid. So years ago, one of them was harassing all of our, our car mirrors at our house. He kept seeing himself in our car mirrors and would defecate on the mirrors and then scratch them, like attacking himself, attacking himself through his own bird poop, smearing it all over our mirrors. And it, it went on for months. <laughs> this bird was retarded. <laughs> it, every single mirror we had on any of the cars. This bird oh, was ridiculous. Wow. We hate this bird. And we could never, like, we would see it flying around and attacking things, but we would never, um, you know, we could never get to it. And, of course, it's the state bird, and it's kind of like a crime to kill the state bird, apparently, because <laughs> just because we've all decided that this is the official bird that does nothing for us, it's a crime to kill it. Doesn't so, that cost you, like, your citizenship, too? It's, like, anti-American. <laughs> uh, I don't know, but that makes me a little... I didn't do anything. No, um, no. <laughs> so... Someone who may or may not be related to me who I couldn't identify if I had to. Let's just just, just throw that out now. My brother. Um, <laughs> so we we kept an air rifle by our back porch, you know, 17 caliber pump action uh, air rifle. Yeah, yeah. And so he sees the, uh, the, the this little bird, I almost accidentally said the name of it, sitting on a branch way out on the edge of our yard, like way across the yard, easily 30 or 40 yards. And this little pellet rifle only has like the little one dot scope on the front. That's all it has. Nice. And so he just picks it up. He kept it pumped up. He picks it up, flicks the safety off and takes a shot and takes the thing's head, like takes the back oh. of its head off. <laughs> Because they, of course, little... the bird was totally mocking you and was totally asking for it. Oh yes, yes, yes. Well, th we knew this was the same one. He had a very distinctive look to him. Like we really could <laughs> yeah. identify him. He would sit on our branches and just scream for hours and then go attack mirrors. So he just like took the back of his head off, and the bird died, and our mirrors were free uh, from then on. But yeah, you're not supposed to kill that bird. But it was a That's stupid an bird. That's inspiring story, and it deserved it. I've learned to loathe squirrels. <laughs> freaking squirrels in the attic i swear okay so da daisy news <laughs> don't worry we'll talk about guns soon yeah gun talk is always fun um so we're going to talk about the dev blog the video blog right mm -hmm. go over some of the fun stuff from that so if you guys haven't watched it as jeremiah said we've got a video up where we <laughs> annoyingly talked over the video and you can also go visit that link and then visit the actual original video to watch the original thing uh, Rocket shut off the first in-game footage of Daisy standalone, and honestly, it was mainly like clothing and stuff, uh, which is exciting. But mainly because of the architecture, like the system that's in place. Uh, I myself could not stop staring at the dynamic sky in the background. It which looks for awesome. me, I I just maybe I just don't care about dynamic sky, but I was not that <laughs> like I was like, yep, looks like the sky. What I was more impressed by is and I I've probably complained about this on every podcast. Daisy has pretty flat lighting a lot of the time. Either yes. it's doing the stupid HDR thing where every time you look at the sky, everything whites out um, or gets super dark and you can't tell where anything is. But just like inside buildings and things, it just uh, the lighting's very flat. But in this, it really felt much more atmospheric and I, I felt a lot more um, immersed in the world. Just watching the video, it seemed to be a lot better. So yes. actually, that, that made me really excited. Everything looked, I don't know, just more polished. You know, Arma 2 is an old game. Yes. I mean, it was not super old. It's what, three years old? Four years old? 2009. 2009. Yeah, it's not new. I mean, it's it's starting to show its age. So yeah. they've definitely brushed the engine up. Um, I thought that was what impressed me the most. But hey, if you like the sky, more power to you. 
<laughs> I'm actually really excited to see the first like like thunderstorm come in because I've actually been playing just a little bit of Take on Helicopters, which uses the same engine that Daisy is based off of. It's like their uh, virtual reality engine, like 2.5. It's not quite mm-hmm. Armor Three, but it's not really Armor Two anymore either. And uh, man, some of the storms in that game look awesome. Like the clouds actually roll in and stuff. So I- I'm excited to see what we'll see in Daisy with the weather. I would like to see storms that weren't just annoying, like just rain, you know, the the, the rain texture falling down. I would like <laughs> the to animated see... texture right in front of the player camera. <laughs> yeah, I think it'd be cool. Like, what if what if when it started raining and like the wind's really blowing, it makes it harder for you to see ahead of you, like you know, because your wet, rain's getting in your eyes and stuff, and it just kind of clouds oh, yeah. your vision up on screen. That'd be really cool. You know, Crisis has done some stuff with like the water effects on your visor. That could be something that they could look into. Yeah. Um, so it took us, uh, the new UI, which seems to be pretty clean so far. I mean, I don't know if there's a whole lot to say about that, but, uh, they well, showed up. The, oh, I actually, I know about the UI. Okay. Um, if you notice, I didn't catch this watching the video because it never just, you know, even crossed my mind, but there is no UI like in game at all. That's okay. That's true. And, uh, Rocket says that, that is intentional. And as it is right now, like already they have it set up so that all of your hunger and thirst and all is all like sound and animation and like contextual and not on the UI anymore at all. But which is just exciting. to clarify, by UI I meant like the menu interface and everything. But yeah, yeah, in right, game right. there's there's nothing. It actually I think the only other game that's really done that successfully was Far Cry two. Mm-hmm. They were very big on making everything you needed to see uh be on something in game. So it could it was very intense, like you're flying down some little back road, you're like <laughs> f- holding a map up in front of your face trying to see where you're going. I but, did like that map. That was cool. But they just abandoned a lot of that and went back to what's fun for Far Cry 3. Uh, but in DayZ, DayZ, you know, is a different type of game where it's supposed to punish you. And uh, I think it'll be really cool. Now, one thing I'm wondering, like, the sound in the mod is all right, but sometimes I have to fade the sound down a lot just because, like, if you're driving in a car, it's so loud. It's hard to hear other people <laughs> talking and things like that. So hopefully the sound will be more balanced so that yeah. you can keep the sound up loud while still hearing other people around you. That's what I'm hoping for, at least. And Rocket has also mentioned that uh, they are planning, like, a complete sound overhaul. That's probably going to be more towards summer. They just want it to be functional in the beginning. Yeah, re-recording all those sounds, That's or even choosing from other stock sounds that's going to be that's going to take a while tedious <laughs> and uh let's see they shut off the, the clothes system which right now when you take clothes off they look like they still have a person in them and they're just laying on the ground which hopefully they're going to change that otherwise there's going to be really creepy looking ghost clothes cadavers laying all over the place yeah when they first cut to those clothes on the ground i'm like oh they've like butchered somebody on the ground in pieces <laughs> it's kind of horrifying yeah um, they, they talked a little bit about, uh, stuff you can keep inside clothing, like clothing has pockets, of course, as you know, so you've got like little mini inventories on your clothing, which I think is kind of cool. Um, I just imagine that as like a bullet point on the back of the box, like our clothing <laughs> has actual pockets. Your hoodies have pockets and you can keep beef jerky in them and blood. Yeah. Actually, I, I had the idea today that, you know, if you wanted to, to dress down as like a civilian, so, you know, you have limited inventory slots. I wonder if you can still hide certain weapons in civilian clothing. Like, you dress down into, like, a civilian hoodie to disguise the fact that you're an evil bandit, but you have, like, a Makarov with, a, like, two mags tucked into your hoodie that you can just quickly draw out and shoot somebody with. That's true, because you could probably do that, but there's no way you can hide a rifle. Right, right. Um, Intriguing stuff there. Yeah, that, you know, they haven't really said anything. So, again, like most things, we speculate a lot on this podcast. Um <laughs> Based yeah. on, we speculate on facts, but we were, we kind of like try to fill in the blanks of where they could go because they've got yeah. a lot of ambitious ideas of where they want to go. But, you know, we don't know yet. We don't know how good it's going to be and how all of this is going to work and if all of this is going to work. So, um, but yeah, then they showed off um, this swamp area, which it looks really interesting, more interesting, more for the fact that they're changing uh, the map that we've grown to know. Um, and, you know, they didn't really go on of how the swamp might play differently, but looks wise, it looked a lot more feature packed and a lot more dense than the map does right now. Yeah, it's got a bit more micro detail. It's just kind of filling that empty area where it used to be. Which, you know, they've been, uh, the devs have been hiring people to do art assets and things lately. I wonder if there's any way they could kind of crowdsource the population of the map. Um, mm. Because 
or or if they have people working on it, I don't even know. Just similar with Skyrim, um, I've got um, mods for Skyrim that make a better version of each city, and it takes each city from being kind of just houses and streets and stuff to being very vibrant and very very different and like it, it totally changes the feel of all the towns and cities yeah so it'd be it'd be cool if they did that for this so you know a really good game with an open world a, a good example i think is the witcher one midway through playing through each chapter in the witcher one i could pretty much find my way around just by landmarks because uh it was the world was so well designed or i thought so yeah. interestingly designed that uh, i just i kind of grew to know the world same thing with Oblivion, and I'm kind of getting there with Skyrim. So, Shinaris is like that in some places. Near, near all the big cities, everyone's pretty familiar with it. But it's still, like, they could make the areas more unique. You know, a lot of those little towns, you could roll through them and not even know which town you're in if you didn't have a map <laughs> to look at. Because, you know, there's just it's all the same houses stuck on the same road in the same looking area, you know. So, yeah, I think the map could definitely use a, a bit more, uh, like you said, like landmarks and like hero objects that make you say, oh, yeah, I'm in this part of the map. But I would actually argue for maintaining like a really tight control over over the level design, because I, if I remember correctly, the original Janaris map was designed by Ivan, one of the guys who was stuck in Greek prison for the last five months. Um, he grew up in the area that the Janaris is modeled off of. So that's why it feels so authentic in so many places, because it's, it's actually based off of you know, areas that he's really familiar with. Oh, no, it feels great. I, I guess when I've said, I was only thinking maybe they could crowdsource it just to just to speed the process up. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I think maybe maybe crowdsource like individual assets as long as it's all fed through Ivan. In the end. Well, right, right, right. I mean, I, I know they've been doing a good job with the amount of control they've had over so far. It looks like they're yeah, doing a pretty yeah. good job. So I, I do trust them. Um, I'm just I'm excited to see if they carry the same styling things they've done with the swamp if they carry that over onto the rest of the map it feels like that could take a really long time but the more of it they do i feel like the better it's gonna appear i don't have a source for this but i do remember reading somewhere uh one of the developers was talking about they do want to have a lot of those empty forest and empty field areas filled in not necessarily with just extra clutter that doesn't feel right but maybe like like small cabins and things that just to break up the landscape and make it interesting to explore again yeah, that would be awesome. And then other things. Now, every building is supposed to be interable, right? Uh, not every building, but basically ninety percent of buildings. Like where, you know, you have a good chance if you run up to a building that you can go inside of it. Okay, because I'm looking through screenshots of the new uh, dev blog that was released today. When we're we're recording this uh, on a on a Friday evening, so today while we're recording. Um, and I'm looking through screenshots of probably Cherno. It's got the apartment complexes that look like the Cherno apartment complexes. Ah, well, here's the interesting part. That's not Cherno. That is just north of Cherno. This is actually an entirely new city. Oh, okay. Um, well, anyway, that place <laughs> it got me thinking about, like, in Cherno, I got pretty good with knowing the landmarks and knowing my way around. Yeah. But, you know, none of those buildings really meant anything. Hmm. And... You know, if you could go into all those apartment buildings and, like, set up a little camp in there or something, like, think how cool that will be if people oh, yeah. could actually, like, start slumming it in the apartments. Um, you know, you could barricade doors and things. I don't know. I, I want that type of density. That's what I want. Um, so where it's not yes, just, please. like, little cities you wander through. It's not just that, but it's also, even if there are little cities and they're a little sparse, just a level of interaction, which they say they want to put in, but we'll yes. see. Uh, yeah, that would also be one of those probably like end of the year features that we. Oh, in, like, oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Um, and you know, yeah. I, I did. I did hear at one point, uh, Jeremiah, in the mod, that there was some server where a clan got organized. It was actually like a populated server that had other players on it, and they fortified. I think it was uh, Selichny, actually. Like they fortified the whole town, and for like an entire day, as clan members logged on and off, they had to defend their town from other survivors. Wow. Just dynamically. I'm like, that, that sounds awesome. I want to see some more of that. Well, you know, we're we're kind of a small group. I don't know how big of clans play, but, you know, we are we never have more than probably four people at a time playing. Yeah. Um, so it'd be kind of cool if we, we could, like, have uh, caches hidden in towns or something. You know, find some outhouse that doesn't look like anyone's using and tuck a couple shotguns in the back of it. You never know. <laughs> but... Of course, we have to see how the spawn system is going to work. If it's the type of thing where you're still spawning on the coasts when you die, you know, it might be good to try to come up with some weapon caches and supplies we oh, can yeah. hide and things. Um, but it'd be cool if you could go in buildings and do that a lot easier. 
without having to worry about people wandering in and seeing a pile of loot laying on the floor and going, oh, this is mine. I shall um, acquire someone else's hard work here. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, sh- I've done that before. Uh, someone <laughs> no set up a tent in the middle of a yard in Electro, just like right in the middle, not even trying to hide it. And they had an M16 in it. And I was like, well, I guess I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they probably meant to come back for this, but they're not trying that hard. So it's mine. Yeah, speaking of uh, of spawning, Rocket also shut off that new spawning mechanic, which I'm really excited about, where no more little strange piles of loot in barns. Anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll actually have to like loot cabinets and behind chairs and in drawers and, and stuff like that and find little individual small loot items, not just giant piles of random stuff in the floor. Now, wouldn't it be kind of cool if like when you open a drawer, it makes a noise that zombies can hear? <laughs> I, I'm actually not convinced that they're going to have uh, actual animated furniture. That may be a limitation of the engine. I, I'm not sure if, if those, those building models can be animated in the world with how they're placed. Oh, really? Yeah, because everything I've seen so far, the drawers are already open. Like, you have to kind of, like, like lean in and, like, look around and, and get into them, but you don't actually physically pull them open. Oh, uh, okay. Well, either way, even if, I mean, even if you don't see it being pulled open, if it made a noise, yeah. and uh, that would be still pretty, pretty cool, I think. It's from, I, he t- Rocket tweeted something, was it this week or last week, saying that uh, zombies were still chasing him when he was indoors. Yes, uh, zombie AI was a, a huge um, like thing that they were working on this week. They had guys working on the mocap animations. They had guys working on the pathfinding and, and some other uh, issues with, with you know making the zombies look and feel totally different. And Rocket said that they do feel 100% different from how they felt in the mod. Like, like just, it's like a whole new game. And part of that is they can now run, in, run inside of buildings. And that's, <laughs> that's terrifying. Yeah, that's... that's... <laughs> yeah. no more hiding in the barns you know kite the zombie trio through the barn to escape nope i hope they're easier to kill well you know if they, if they run in straight lines they'll or they you know run in predictable fashions they'll be yes. easier to kill no um, more arma 2 ai flanking zigzag <laughs> well right that's the hardest thing of killing them before is you almost had to wait till they got point blank range because oh, yeah they'd be running at you and they just suddenly switch directions and it didn't make any sense but if they're like left for dead where they're just kind of charging towards you then I, I I wouldn't be quite as worried, but then I'll also be scared because up till now, our default is to kite them through buildings. And if that doesn't work, I won't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see some actual like zombie fighting happening again, and that excites me too. Like It does, yeah, because we, oh, we've talked man. about this before, but zombies aren't really a threat anymore. The other people are threats, but zombies aren't a threat. Wouldn't it be cool? Have you um read any of the Walking Dead comics? I'm actually avoiding them purposefully. Oh, okay. Um. I don't know if the show has really touched on this. I can't remember, but in the walking dead comics, and this isn't giving anything away. Um, there are large roving hordes of zombies. they like a yeah. herd. They just kind of band up over time and, and they can create like several hundred zombies just wandering around, um, looking to run into stuff. And, uh, that could be absolutely ridiculous. If we could actually come across some of those, like, Oh man, and if they could run after you, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just I'm remembering that like second week where we were we were first playing DayZ, just like me and Joel at, at the time, just the, the, just the second week we were playing last May, and he had gotten this whole horde chasing him. Back when you couldn't break aggro, like when zombies were chasing you, they would follow you until they were dead or you were dead. Uh huh. And we actually ran like he ran east, I ran west for 20 minutes, and as I as I reached those those fields north of Cherno, I come over the hill. And I just see Joel's silhouette come over the hill with the horde chasing him. And he's like, Dave, help! <laughs> that, that was amazing. I, I, if that happens again, oh, wow, that, that would be some awesome moments. You've just brought back the unpleasant memory of when you couldn't break aggro. I had totally forgotten about that. But you're yeah. right, and it's terrible. <laughs> it was like when they're chasing you, find a big hill and try to get him to commit suicide. Otherwise, you're dead. Well, that, that was our kind of running joke for a while was every time I respawned without fail within five minutes, I would have some small <laughs> herd chasing me. I don't, I had just really bad luck with that. I used to love too because people tended to call you out on chat like, hey, here's the guy running past Electro with like zombies kiting past him. <laughs> and they never went to help. No, they just <laughs> want to call it out and watch you suffer. Hey, everybody come look at the noob. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, is that everything from the, the last week's dev blog? I think that was all the major stuff. Basically, they just teased a lot of things. You should go watch the video. They'll tell you more than us. Um, yes. But it's really, it was really exciting. So now we have an entirely new dev blog today. Wow, we just talked about the one from uh, like two weeks ago for how long? So much good info. <laughs> so timely. <laughs> your number one source of news. Dramatic After logo. <laughs> your number one source of two weeks old news. Exactly. So yeah, uh, new blog. What do we got in the new blog? Uh, let's see. Exciting part is uh, Ivan and Martin are now free from Greek prison. Oh, and yes. Actually, that is very exciting. Yeah, you know, everybody was, was really rooting for them to, to get out after being imprisoned for photography in Greece. I mean, come on, really? Uh, they're back home, and apparently, uh, you know, they've had some time with their families, and they're wanting to get right back into the swing of things. They're back to work. And uh, really enjoying it from the sound of it. Cool. Um, I, if I remember correctly from the video, Rocket was saying that Ivan actually wrote the the design document for that swampland area while in prison and like mailed it to them. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, you can tell that these guys like really enjoy what they what they do here, which is always so awesome to see developers that are just like so so passionate about what they're working on. You know that good stuff comes out of that. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, again. It's kind of one of those things, it's sad to say, but it's easy to kind of forget about that story because they were in for so long. Like, it, it became a really sad thing. Like, nope, they're still there. Nope, still there. Nope, yeah. still there. So uh, it's it's really exciting that they're out now, and we're really glad that they're home. Um, not just because of Daisy, but just because they seem like two pretty nice guys who just got on the wrong end of a bad misunderstanding with a government yeah. and <laughs> um, unfortunately had to suffer because of it. So. Yeah, we're glad they're home, and and we're glad to see uh, that what what they're going to contribute to the game, and hopefully they've had enough time to rest before Rocket started cracking the whip again. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you know, I can't imagine being arrested in a foreign country for photography, and then you know you're sitting in jail, and they're like, "Well, you can't see a judge because our judges are like all on strike for a while. So if you could just hang out here in jail, that'd be great." <laughs> uh, well, anyway, um, yeah, the whole team is just. I, apparently going crazy getting stuff done uh, which is why this current dev blog uh, is actually a week late we didn't get one last friday because they were too busy doing awesome things to the game which i am okay with uh rockets mentioned here in the blog that their team uh, is expanding uh they're hiring some new artists to do props and stuff which yes more awesome apocalyptic stuff please uh, their closed testing is continuing with the server setup, you know, the kind of MMO thing where the, the server controls all the goodies and the client just does what it's told, which should really cut down on hacking. And this is exciting. They're hoping to start the closed testing next week. Which, now this looks like, this is not the closed test with a bunch of people from the community. This is a closed, like, internal test for yes. them, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it doesn't sound like the, the 1,000 player testing, you know, like the YouTubers and streamers and all that probably won't start next week but uh in the next couple of weeks it's looking real good now this was interesting maybe i just missed this but uh they said they're gonna have 50 people on the server initially then they're gonna work up to 150 and beyond to see what limitations they have yes so they really are trying to have more than 64 man servers uh rocket has done tests with the uh the mod code and i think he was using the arma 3 engine this was like oh gosh last july uh, he had 250 and 300 player servers like functioning in some tests, but what it's come down to at this point, it's not so much a technical issue anymore because of all this you know great new architecture that they ha they actually have set up. It's not the game engine that's holding them back anymore. It's just that the map really won't support more than about 150 players and still have you know a fun feeling to it where it's got that yeah, survival there'd, there'd feel. Yeah, have to be a lot of loot, but it could definitely have more than 60. Because oh mean, yeah, yeah, you could be on a 60 man server and it not really feel like a whole lot. Um, it just matters where they all are. So. I'm excited to see that. Um, cause I, I think even with 150 players, you would still have that option to do, you know, the classic Dave move and just go hide in the woods and eat your beans in silence. Or, you know, you can pull a Joel and go create chaos on the coast and, and or <laughs> even, you know, with 150 players, you don't have to go to the coast to create chaos. <laughs> There'll be people everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully uh, we keep joking about the coast, but hopefully the spawn system does change that up. You know, I like the idea of having all the like the better loot be farther up north and have to work harder to get to it. But it's also way too easy just to camp the coast areas and just murder people. Yeah. So 
It'd Maybe be nice. some spawns in the west, like in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. Or just, yeah, in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I The only problem I have with, with having more randomized spawns off the coast is that that would really negatively affect creating camps if you had the possibility like, okay, I'm creating my camp in this cool little wooded spot, but hopefully no one's going to spawn here and steal all my junk. All right, now uh, I know we're in the middle of talking about DayZ, but I've got to jump in real quick. We have Joel is going to join us in a second here. Oh, yeah. That thumbnail picture gets me every time. (laughs) hey Hey, Joel. (laughs) Welcome to the podcast. What's up? What's up? (laughs) Say hi. What's up? All right, that's enough of that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and see you guys later. <laughs> so, Joel, you can't stay for long. Um, if we can take a break from talking about Daisy for a minute, Dave, I wanted to do a short little new. <laughs> I, <laughs> I wanted continue. to do a short little news segment, but it's good to do it while Joel's here because some of this stuff, can, you know, is things that interest him. So, Go for uh, it. let's do the short news segment, and then uh, Joel can um, can do his ninety seconds or whatever he has for us this week. And then Joel, you said you have to get out of here. Uh, yeah, unfortunately. That's fine. We appreciate you stopping by the podcast. Oh, I appreciate uh, you guys letting me uh, join your podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can close um, the place up, so, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, there's this new segment I'm considering adding to the podcast, and we're going to try it out tonight, but, you know, news is something you can get from a lot of different sites, but you always have to be concerned that they're not giving, you know, the real story. So, we have some real cutting-edge investigative journalism here. Um, that I've prepared that I would like to read for you guys. Now, this is all about a week old. Um, but again, so you got it you know, from the newspaper. Shut up. This is the real <laughs> story. And uh, anyway, here we go. Item one Grand Theft Auto 5's release date has been announced. The game was initially set for some time around March, but has been moved to September 17th. This is likely Whoa. to avoid losing sales to upcoming March blockbusters such as Hyper Dimension Neptunia Victory and Lego City <laughs> Undercover. <laughs> Those are Which, real games. My wife would be playing the Lego City game. So, Dude, Lego City Undercover, the previews of it. It looks pretty awesome. It looks like the E-rated uh, Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you guys. Um, anyway, <laughs> item number two. Dell, one of the companies most responsible for making people hate PCs, is in serious financial trouble. Apparently, 10 years of making terrible products has proven to be a poor business strategy, and they have no money. (laughs) Not content with letting HP become the new worst PC manufacturer, Microsoft has stepped in and helped Dell go private. And by helped, I mean that Microsoft pity-gifted them large amounts of money under the guise of investing in the company. (laughs) It certainly worked when they took pity on Apple in the late 90s, so here's hoping that Dell is able to get back on its feet and get back to making more shoddy and expensive PCs for college students whose parents, like, totally hate them. (laughs) (laughs) And college students' uh, computer labs have to be filled with Dells, of course. Yes. Item number three, Sony has called a press conference on February 20th. It is assumed that this conference will tease the PlayStation 4. We at Casual Shenanigans Gaming are very excited to see which two-year-old budget PC will form the basis for the next six to eight years of (laughs) cutting-edge gaming. Man, you hurt me so much. You did it on my... Just because of me. (laughs) I'm so glad Joel could be a part of this. Exactly. (laughs) Screw you guys. (laughs) The Witcher 3 has been announced. It will be an open-world RPG about 30 times the size of The Witcher 2 and rivaling the size of Skyrim. CD yes. Projekt Red, the developer, also claims this will be the last game in the series involving Geralt, unless it sells well, in which case they never said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they didn't add that last part, but you know that's true. Just yeah. like Mass Effect, oh, we're making another Mass Effect game. Uncharted, oh, making another Uncharted game. Dude, I can play Witcher games until Halo. I die. Okay, who remembers the whole finish the fight thing? Finish the fight. Oh, finish that, the fight. That amount of marketing behind that was insane too. Uh, yeah, I really believed it was the end. I got involved <laughs> in that story. That was a That's moving just ending. Awkward. <laughs> and then they're like, "Oh yeah, that whole thing where like he's drifting through space. Yeah, we're he's just gonna back. wake him back up. <laughs> How convenient." So anyway, guys, that's the news. Turn in next time to tune in next time. I can't do words. Tune in next time to learn <laughs> the <in>. truth. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Say what? Tune in next time to tune in next time to tune in next time. Tune in next time to 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 tune in next time. I like you shutting up. All right. Um, anyway. <laughs> so much love on this podcast. <laughs> so, so Joel, did you have a, a 90 seconds for us this week? Yeah, I did. I do. 
<laughs> I was just saying, well, that's great that you did, but I mean, I was just paying attention to it. I did that on the earlier podcast called Joel Likes Consoles Still. <laughs> <laughs> I like uh, consoles too, although I haven't turned my PS3 on in like two weeks. But, hey, anyway, um, I wish you actually there. lived somewhere closer to I did, but I would let you borrow um, the, I got the game Ico and it came with Shadows of the Colossus. And those two games are absolutely incredible. I've beaten them both. Oh, you have? Oh, yeah. Back yes. on the back on the PS2, Shadows of the Colossus was eco. I was like, eh. But Shadows of the Colossus, that's one of the most interesting, innovative games I've ever played. Yeah. So just enough of the hate. They're games. <laughs> They're fun <laughs> games. You can okay. have fun. All right, all right, Joel. Let me. I'll just swing <laughs> back over to your side. Some of my all-time favorite games I've spent the most time on are Grand Theft. Not Grand. Well, yes, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas on the PS2 which I played on a nine inch TV that faded from black and white to color, <laughs> like back and forth continuously. <laughs> yeah. That I got it from a yard sale cause they couldn't sell it. So they that's gave it awesome. to me at the end. Yeah. That's how great this thing was. Um, and then, um, Gran Turismo four. I've put, Oh my gosh, so much time into Gran Turismo four. I got all the car licenses. How lame is that? Um, that's or all lame. the, all the driving licenses. I don't know <laughs> if you guys have played Gran Turismo, but anyway, um, and then other really favorite games, like I'm talking like top 10 games would be, uh, the Uncharted series most definitely. Oh, and so good. And modern warfare, the original, which I played on the PS3 and the PC, but I started out on the PS3 easily put a couple hundred hours on the PS3. So I, I feel like I've got my credits and don't, let's not even talk about GameCube. That would be a whole nother discussion, <laughs> but, uh, like, I feel like I've got my game creds here on the PlayStation. Uh, I, yes. I think, I think Dave would really appreciate shadow of the Colossus. Uh, it's probably it's, fun, it's phenomenal so much for stuff now. about it. Now, do you have the HD now. collection? Yeah, I do. Yeah, it's dude. It's mind blowing. Every new monster, it's like so addicting. It's like, what's the next monster? What do I gotta do? And the physics in it, like, there's one that you have to battle this thing up in the sky, and that a feeling of when you jump off like uh, the, the oh, giant yeah. monster's wing, and you're just hoping to grab onto the edge like of his back somewhere. But the, the floaty feel of it, oh, it's just. It kind yeah, of feels, kind of feels, it reminds me of Uncharted 2 or 1, 2, and 3, how you jump and has that kind of weight, you know, to it. It's Yeah, uh, they do a really good job of making mm-hmm. you feel like you're actually flying through the air. I need to well, let, I need to let Dave borrow the PS3 to play through Uncharted. He would have a ball. Oh man, Dave, you haven't played through Uncharted? <laughs> I'll add it to my, uh, my borrowed Xbox collection <laughs> under my TV. <laughs> but Dave, in all seriousness, the Uncharted series, it's one of the most cinematic, like if you like Indiana Jones... This is better than all of Indiana Jones. Yeah, and it's kind of the easier game, so you'd be good at it. <laughs> Joel, I know where you live. <laughs> I know you work. Behind so, me. anyway, <laughs> I, I don't know the context of that. I've never seen your office, but uh, anyway. This is better without context. Welcome to the part of the podcast where Joel talks about something boring and unrelated to anything else for 90 seconds. Joel, would you like to take it away? Uh, yeah, uh, the 90 seconds is basically saying um, why I'm not going to be on this podcast for, for any time longer tonight. Um, my cousin has never seen Die Hard. Whoa. And that is a sin. So I'm going to... true. I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna introduce that to him tonight because we really want to see the new one. I heard it's, the new one's not that great, but Rotten I still Tomatoes had it. a thirteen percent. I know. Don't, I don't. Even, I don't. Even, I, I, like. I don't even want to hear it. I still like, just want to no, see it because it's mean, Bruce Willis. You know, isn't like the end all to be all. Yeah. But sometimes you just can tell. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. They gave they gave Expendables two like a horrible rating. I went to go see that movie and I enjoyed it so much because I, I was enjoyed like, it. It wasn't nearly as good as the first one, but I still enjoyed I, it. It was. It was just like old guys blowing crap up. I mean, that's what it is. Like people but are like, you could have a great story i'm like really a story people are shooting people with giant shotguns does it matter no it's (laughs) like it's not that kind of movie too it was made to be a pg-13 movie and then after they were done they decided eh because pg-13 movies make more money than our movies yeah um and they decided nope it's gonna be r so all the blood that's all cg (laughs) <laughs> they, they added that all back in, which is why there isn't all like the limbs flying everywhere like there was uh. in the first movie. <laughs> um, so I think that's what the kind of know. didn't do huh. it for me. Because in the first movie, you got like Terry Crews with his USAS 12 shotgun. Just, yeah. Like, shredding people's bodies. <laughs> and, you know, that's just a, that's just a different type of enjoyable. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. So tonight I'm going to be introducing him to the ultimate badass movie pretty much so. if i could say something about die hard that movie holds up it my does. wife and i we watched yeah, it, it again a couple weeks ago and we've seen some other early 90s movies recently i feel like i can't remember their names now that i'm thinking about it but 
Uh, and a lot of early 90s movies do not hold up at all. Like late 80s, early 90s, they're just, especially sci-fi and uh, action, they're just not that good. Uh, but Die Hard totally holds up. Like that is a, that's a, it's funny. The action's good. The cinema photography, which usually for me, that's what does it now, is looking at yeah. older movies like with a really crummy CG or something. But yeah. the cinema photography all holds up. Like that's a really good movie. It's worth watching on Blu-ray if you haven't. Yeah, something. Uh, yeah, I, I'm. I, w- I actually wanted to get the five disc set that just came out or four disc set, whatever. But I was like, ah, then th- this one came out, and supposedly they're actually already working on a sixth. So I think possibly to bring back the wife or something like that. So I was like, I'll wait until they're all done because. Bruce I'll be Willis honest. Awesome. I don't really care about the, like the overall story of the series that much. <laughs> no, not me. I just love seeing Bruce Willis. I think the only old man who used to be a young action man series I actually care about is our um, Rocky. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, before I get off, that's all I wanted to say. Um, but also, YouTube people, please comment on Dave's blog so much. Spam it. He has not seen Band of Brothers. I gave him the Blu-ray what? discs. What? He has not oh, seen Band on. of Brothers yet. So people, Dave, force him to watch it. It is the, one of the best shows ever. So Dave, so right. Dave, Dave, stop <laughs> so watching much shame Glee. Right now. Tell if, Dave to stop watching Glee and to watch. <laughs> Joel, Band what of I do in my private time is none Dave, of your business. Okay. Hold on. No, no, no. <laughs> We're taking a time out. Are Are you watching Glee? I'm not watching. <laughs> now, Dave, I'm not people are gonna... <laughs> this is a safe place. This is just between us, you, me, and the other mistake. thousand people listening to this. Look, if, if I want to sit down on a whatever night that comes on with a big bowl of ice cream in my pajamas, <laughs> Pink curse pajamas. your skittiness. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, a tub of ice cream, you know, whatever. <laughs> thanks, for let, thanks for letting me hop on, guys, for a few minutes. So, all right, um, yeah, good to see you, Joel. Well, I, I, I think I think you guys, presence, Joel. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys understand. <laughs> all right, hey, have a great night. Hard. And Dave has Borderlands Two gifted for me. I'm not a horrible person, people. But yeah, also, I didn't, I didn't know you credit. guys you guys were playing. With, invite me in next time because I've got it on Steam and I'm looking for people to play with. Joel, he's yeah. not supposed to know. We're playing <laughs> it, dude. This is just <laughs> awkward now. <laughs> <laughs> and with that note, sign out, guys. See ya. See you, Joel. All right. Anyway, so we're gonna have to have a podcast where we just talk about TV shows because I feel like I feel like I've seen more of the classics than you guys just from yeah. our casual conversations. So I, I gotta introduce you guys to some stuff. Yeah, I actually grew up without cable. I know. So it's did like I. A horrible I, life. No, I grew up without TV of any kind. Oh, um, man, you've yeah. been catching up. Yeah, dude, I was homeschooled. Um, <laughs> like, and we barely even had movies. <laughs> like, we had five or ten movies, maybe. So, yeah, ever since college, I have been catching up like crazy. <laughs> Those VHSs um, are probably well-worn by this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did eventually upgrade to DVDs. but Whoa, look at Mr. Yeah. Movie Guys. Um, so anyway, and, and my parents, um, they had one of those. Have you heard of a TVG? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> my parents had that for a brief amount of time, but, man, it never works right. And uh, in case you don't know, a TVG is something that parents get when they want to let their kid watch a movie that maybe is fine for them to watch, except it has a ton of salty language they don't want their young child exposed to. (laughs) So the TVG, it reads off the closed captioning and it mutes the audio and then throws up edited closed captioning on screen. Um, But there's also there's one step farther. Um, I forget what it's called, but my parents still have young kids, so they still have one of these clear play. That's what it's called. Clearplay is a new service that actually edits what you're watching. Like it's programmed, you have to download a filter for each movie and it will automatically skip ahead. And it's totally my parents they set up Clearplay DVD player in their house and then they forgot the password to disable it. So oh, everything no. they watch is Clearplayed. They for my dad's birthday a couple years ago, we watched Rambo First Blood <laughs> on Clearplay. <laughs> It was the most boring movie ever. Like he jumped was it like three out of minutes a, long. He jumped out of a tree on somebody, and then it just cuts to him like walking through the woods. <laughs> That's amazing. You know, those things never work right. My wife actually went to a local school, and they had one for like you know their in class movies. And the teacher pulled it out one day, and apparently it was missynced by like five seconds. So it would mute the actual audio and then unmute for like all this like horrible swearing in the movie. <laughs> so it was like super, super awkward. 
Okay, so some of that story might have been cut off because Skype decided to take a giant dump all over working correctly. Daisy, standalone um, style. Yeah, we're back. <laughs> um, you, you'll never know all of the amazing things you missed. Um, you know, we bonded. It was a real, it was really something. So much bonding. You'll never know. Um, anyway, so yeah, I guess let's just go back to Daisy at this point. Uh, <laughs> Is it like 30 for- minutes? <laughs> I forget where we were. Yeah, guys, um, if you haven't read the, the newest blog that just came out today, um, and by today I mean the uh, the 15th, you guys need to go check that out. It, it's mainly text, so I'm not going to you know read you guys off the website. You can do that yourself. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I hope you can do that yourself. Maybe you're listening to this podcast because it's your only way to get Daisy News. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just going to cover a couple of things that really caught my eye. Um, Rocket actually went over some uh, questions on Twitter Man, there were some horrible questions, mainly being, can I have beta key? <laughs> Which was like every, well, it's like three of those questions, oh, come then, on. then an actual question, and then... You're asking that in your heart, and you know it, so... <laughs> but I'm not asking it on Twitter. That's <laughs> over true. Over and over. I mean, you can you can play the bigger man, but we know. <laughs> we know. Deep inside, I'm screaming, please, <laughs> love me, give me a beta key. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the question that really caught my eye here, someone asked... Uh, and I just totally lost it. There it is. Uh, will there be any new features in the first version of Standalone, or will it just be the classic Daisy mod? And, man, this is exciting. Rocket just answered, the experience will be entirely new. There is virtually nothing that has been directly ported from the mod. Everything has been redone. Except your frustration and <laughs> the terrible people you will be playing with. Like, they're, like they're Joel. <laughs> And he says, you know, that wasn't our original intention, which is why they had that initial December launch date. But it's evolved this way, and we're very glad that it has. And what excites me is not only is he saying that everything is totally new and awesome, but he, he's using, and this is getting into, like, my speculation stuff here, he's using past tense, everything has been redone, which is very promising for a March release date, in my opinion. Once again, well, pure speculation from Dave. Yeah, I'm not. I'm past the point of even commenting when, like, you get so excited about it's coming, guys. <laughs> you're you're like the people who who see Gabe Newell hold up three fingers and are like, it's a sign. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna deny it. That's what I do. <laughs> so anyway, go go read the blog post. It's really good. Um, now we're gonna move on to the other game that this podcast is also about, Battlefield Three, which. Uh, has in game its last DLC coming out. When's it coming out? March. You know, I can't find an answer to that. Like everyone keeps asking, and I, I think it's, it's like mid March or something. Yeah, it's sometime in mid March. Um, but uh, yeah, in game is coming out, and it, I don't know if they're calling it in game just because it's the last DLC and it ends the game, or are there story elements? Or I, I'm assuming there aren't story elements. They just decided to call it that. Who knows? Yeah, it's just but, uh, it's just end game because it's the last DLC. But uh, what did you say, Dave? How many maps is Battlefield 3 going to have by the time this is all over? Yeah, Yaku and I had to count it out today. Okay, so there were nine maps on launch. And then some of those were kind of disappointing because I think there were only three of them had like jets on launch, like three maps at launch with jets. Uh, we're going to have, after Endgame, 29 total maps for Battlefield 3. Because we've had five DLCs with four maps apiece? Yes. That is crazy that's probably more maps than any other multiplayer game i'm aware of and not including fan-made maps and stuff yeah, like you yeah. could load into battlefield 2 and, and you know th- these aren't like like quick thrown together like cut and paste like arena maps these are these are entirely new environments like where the artists have have created a whole new feel for every map it's insane the amount of work that's gone into these there are enough maps that i've gone for a month or two without playing on you know a couple of the maps and not even realizing it because oh I'm yeah having so much fun on other ones um, the scope of Battlefield 3 is definitely, it's, it's just so massive. It's staggering. And in it game, really is. It looks to, imp- uh, you know, it looks to add to it. Um, they've got a couple new maps they were teasing. One of them is Operation Riverside. Um, is that really the final name? Internal working title is River. But <laughs> Come on, they call guys. it Operation, Operation Riverside. Um, it looks a lot like a map from Bad Company 2 to me, just based on this one screenshot. Uh, and I forget the name of the map in Bad Company 2, but it was a fun map, and I really liked it. So I'm not saying that as a negative, but it just kind of reminds me of that map, I think of an it, autumn map. Yeah, it's the visual style, I think, is very similar. Although, looking at the screenshot, I don't see any reused assets or anything like that. It's it's all completely new. And then there's uh, 
Nabandan Flats. <laughs> there we um, go. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> There's a, a battlefield map name that you can't pronounce finally. I mean, Nabandan. <laughs> what? Am I really good at pronouncing them or something? No, I'm just saying, like, like Riverside, lame. Like, give us something, oh, oh. something crazy to call the map so that we can't, we can't pronounce it in the in the uh, the map selection. <laughs> oh, don't worry. All of the other names are terrible for any game. Uh, Nabandan Flats it looks to be a desert, so that could be cool. You're very um, observant. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm telling it for all the other people who don't know. Um, and then there's Kiasar, Kiasar Railroad, um, which that actually looks pretty cool. It looks kind of like um, Death Valley yeah. to me, uh, just during the day. Um, That's actually the you know, best way to describe it, I think. like The forest and all feels just like Death Valley. But we have yet to see, you know, we're just seeing one screenshot, so we have yet to see how it's going to actually look. But it's a picturesque summer logging industry setting. Um, Apparently in Iran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah anyway um and then there's sabalon pipeline which is a snow map because everyone likes snow maps um and snow is really cool but they didn't do a whole lot with it in the game like it doesn't really interact with you dynamically but snow I, still looks cool so i did notice you know, that vehicles seem to have some some traction issues on on snow compared to I've other maps down, I've slid down the mountain on Alborar's <laughs> or Albor's mountain. I've slid down that numerous times in a tank. Um, so, I mean, so it's a little bit, but it's still like it's yeah, it's not a ton. Oh, speaking of Alborez, uh, they actually mentioned this in, in the blog, talking about uh, you know, this this pipeline map. This map was in early the early production stages during uh, Gamescom 2012. That's where they first demoed uh, Alborez, which was the the first Albor's, Albor's. yeah Albor's, the first you know snow map for Battlefield Three. And people have freaked out so much just because there was a snow map coming that they actually decided to to make pipeline like turn it in that direction of making it into a snow map. Yeah, you know, I guess they had the huh. design laid out and like the layout and like all right, give it snow. I don't know what it is about snow that people love so much, but people like snow. It's so. nice. It's a nice change of pace. I think when you you play so many desert maps and I could go for more forest maps, which is why I'm I'm really excited about the the railroad map. Looks like my kind of thing. It reminds me of Caspian mixed with Death Valley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it does look to be good. Um, and then the new modes, of course, capture the flag featuring the dirt bike, which everyone is very excited about um, because capture the flag. It looks like Call of Duty's capture the flag, but fun because it has vehicles. Um, and I'm excited to see. I'm hoping the dirt bikes are faster than the four wheelers. Or have some some edge to them to make them really fun, or they jump higher or something. Well, like, there are no four wheelers on these new maps that I'm aware well, of. No, I know, I know. I'm or I don't know, but I mean, as far as I know, there aren't. Yeah. But I just mean because we already got four wheelers, which are cool. But I would like to see the dirt bikes be more different. I guess maybe they turn sharper. Yeah, like more or, agile, a little bit faster, maybe. Yeah, you can pop wheelies, do tricks in the air, something like that. Um, but yeah. The uh, capture the flag mode looks like it has a potential to be really fun. And there's a mode I do not care about at all, and that's air superiority. Um, because I am a sucky jet pilot. <laughs> For people like Dave, who I am sure you are looking forward to it. My body is ready. Yeah. Um, it just gives all the jet pilots who don't like actually helping the team, but like driving around in circles shooting each other, <laughs> or flying around in circles, they can just go play jet superiority or air superiority, and they can have fun, and all the people who actually like to play the real game can play on the ground. I sense bitterness. <laughs> well, I mean, if I was a better jet pilot, I might be one of those jet pilots, you know, just flying around shooting other people, but I'm not, so that's not important. Yeah, there seems to be a lot I'm... of people who just aren't interested in the aircraft, which is it's funny for me because I, for Battlefield, like every Battlefield game I've, I've ever played from the original on through, you know, 2142, I've always had this, like, need to be at least pretty good at, like, every single thing in the game. I don't know what it is. Like, I feel like I have to be a jack of all trades. Well, I, I, I don't I know like, why. I like doing that, too. I really love the helicopters. Like, the helicopters, they feel like they fit in, but the jets, it's probably because they've had to nerf. Uh, their guns and, and missiles so much. Yeah. They just feel kind of worthless unless you're shooting other jets. And at that point, what's the point? Um, you know, you can shoot other helicopters down, but then you're really just fighting other air units. And it doesn't really feel like fighting on the ground. It doesn't feel like you're as powerful as a jet would be, you know? Well, you know, it's funny you should mention that because I've actually had people complain on some of my jet videos because one of, one of my favorite things to do is if, if I'm unopposed in the air, if the other, if the other jet pilots have given up, 
I immediately turn to the ground forces, and I love using that 20 millimeter can to kill infantry. And, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, that's not very sportsmanlike. And I'm like, it, it feels awesome. Like, I just swooped out of the sky and killed that guy trying to take the flag. Like, he had no defenses. Like, I called in air support. I love this See, game. See, but what I like, though, I mean, if you've seen videos of a of a real jet laying down fire on something. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Like, it just, it'll light up like a football field of explosion, and that's what I want. <laughs> you need to go back and play Battlefield 2. <laughs> I, I, well, Battlefield 2 was awesome in some yeah. ways, and in some ways Jets, it was though, terrible. Oh, man, I went back and played some of that uh, while I was waiting for Battlefield 3 to come out, and the jet pilots in that game, oh, man, I they, they can't touch the jet pilots in Battlefield 3. I mean, it's, I got that backwards. They're just, the pilots in Battlefield 2 are, like, in a different game, different zone. Like, they come out of their game to, like, wipe out the masses of, like, peasants below, and then <laughs> you're only allowed to stare up in awe. Like, it got to the point where Battlefield 2 had some of those, like, emplaced AA units, right? Like, the little stinger units on the bipods. Right. Uh, the, the pilots would actually memorize the range of them and, like, where they were on the map, and so if you got in one of those and like tried to lock, they would escape out of your lock range. And when they came back, because of they knew like where they were on the map, they would know which of one of those guns you were in. And so they would break lock and you'd be like, all right, where'd they go? And then the next thing you know, they're dropping like dummy bombs on top of you like three seconds later because they know exactly which one you're in. Like It's terrifying. Yeah, I've seen some of the jet stuff oh, videos people did in Battlefield 2. It's, it's crazy. Um, but... Yeah, there'll finally be a place for all those people. They can just go play in their own <laughs> special little pilot. It'll be a good place mode. to practice too. It probably will. I'm, I'm actually, I do need to get more jet practice. Um, I'm, I'm currently really good at hitting things that are standing still as long <laughs> as no one else is attacking me. I'm also, I'm really good at shooting down the AC-130, um, <laughs> and I'm really good at killing helicopters. But also, again, that's not really fair comparisons. Um, when it's I shoot it's, other it's jets, funny because I, I have a hard time hitting choppers for some reason. I, I can't figure out what it is. If jets wander in front of me, I'm able to wound them sometimes. And I've probably killed, uh, no lie, I've probably killed like a dozen jets with a jet. <laughs> I'm kind of curious to see what I am I'm at now. Let me, let me look. Where's More than a dozen. <laughs> that's probably a safe, safe bet there. Oh wait, they don't they don't divide it up into jet kills. It's just kills. Oh darn. You can't see how many kills you've gotten with the jet? No, I I mean you can, but I was hoping to see like actual jet kills. Oh, like jet, how many jet other jets? Jet. Yeah. How many other jets you've killed with a jet? Yeah, they they don't do that. It's just general kills. And generally when I'm in a jet, I'm I'm going for infantry and tanks a lot of the time. Right. Um Yeah, I've got 1690 kills with the flanker and 1586 with the hornet. My goodness. I spent 43 hours in the super flanker? Man. That seemed high or low? <laughs> that seems pretty high. That, that's quite a <laughs> chunk of time there. I guess it has been like the last year and a half. That's. Well, anyway, I'm sure everyone else is thrilled listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, let me read off my battle log stats that you're all so <laughs> interested in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that, you know, that's Battlefield 3. I'm excited for Endgame to come out because there's a lot of topics I want to bring up about where Battlefield 3 fits into the pantheon of Battlefield games and modern shooters. Um, I feel like there's some good discussions we can have about that, but I want to wait until in-game comes out, because then we'll have seen everything they've created for us, and I feel like at that point we'll be able to uh, to really, really talk about it and do it justice. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited. And, you know, looking at, at those the list of supported game modes, uh, man... That's a lot for these new maps. Like you have capture the flag, air superiority, conquest, rush, squad rush, team deathmatch, squad deathmatch. That's a nice little selection there. It is. It is. Um, you know, we'll we'll see because on some of the maps, like just because they support team deathmatch, the spawns are jacked up, and it's just <laughs> one giant bloodbath. And you know, just because they support it doesn't mean they're that great. Um, better to have but, it than not have it, though. <laughs> Even if it sucks. Yeah, yeah. Better to have it and, and stay away from it than have no one have the choice. Because I know <laughs> some people do like to get into those. I've seen, I mean, there are some people who do well playing at the Nashar Canals. Yes. Um, there, there are people who can actually play Deathmatch there well. But for me, the spawns are just so messed up. And the sight lines, it's just not designed for that. Yeah. And um, That map is super, I, super popular for TDM for some reason. And I can't stand it. Like, I like a good... 
I like a good team death match, but that map I I hate. And by comparison, I love close quarters. I love all the maps in close quarters, and uh, not a big fan of most of the death match, like the the team death match on other maps. You can tell that close quarters they they put a lot more work into making it infantry only. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, uh, I believe that's everything we have this week, isn't it? Yeah, uh, mainly talking about Endgame, just the fact that uh, I've been so impressed with DICE's like range of stuff that they put in these DLCs. I, I love that they went with this concept of not just adding maps, but adding like a consistent theme for each expansion pack. And I think that's that's really that's worked true. well. That is, that is really nice, instead of just putting out more maps. And I like they didn't bow to community whining and just put out a whole bunch of old maps yes. and resed up. Because the, the Karkin maps were really fun. And, and I and I hope they take some Battlefield 3 maps and put them into Battlefield 4. But, uh, you know, I like the stuff they come up with most of the time, so I'd rather they create new things than just rehash all the old stuff. So It's also really neat to see, with this, this Battlefield Premium and this, this series of DLCs, it gives the, the artists and the designers so much more time and the tools that by the time you get to this, this point where <clears throat> we're, what, like a year and a half after the release of the game now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, like, close to it. Year and three months. Yeah, like these guys know the tool set, and and they're at this point, it's just like all about creativity. And you know, that's that's you, you can you can really tell from the maps that they're just they're going crazy, like and just pushing the limits of what they can do. Yeah. So, uh, guys, as always, if you want to be a part of the show, write into casual shenanigans at gmail dot com with questions, comments, anything. We may read them on air, um, or tweet at us at casual shenaniga. Or follow myself or Evil Viking on Twitter at uh, at Germ Gaming or at Evil Viking thirteen. Nope, at or Evil Viking. At, at Evil Viking. Get I'm you sorry, every I can't, time. <laughs> I can't always remember which. Sometimes you're Evil Viking thirteen, and sometimes you're the OG Evil Viking. So this is how I roll, man. I don't always remember. Yeah, you know, I think um, this is the first podcast where I haven't chuckled at our our Twitter name. It might actually be getting old <laughs> finally. We're getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, this podcast tonight was a little bit different. We didn't have the whole crew here. But uh, you, you can uh, send in comments about how much of slackers they all are. And we'll read them next time while they're here. So you can you can shame them on air. Yes. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for listening. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. Um, and let us know what you're excited about for Daisy and Battlefield 3. Let us know what you think about uh, everything we've been talking about tonight. You know, there's a lot of really exciting possibilities for PC gaming in 2013. So we're, we're curious to hear what you guys' thoughts are. And uh, any other parting shots, Dave? No, it's just a, a good time for all this awesomeness that's going on. I, I'm, I'm at this like weird dry spot, though, where you, know, you got like Daisy standalone probably coming in March or April. You got... Day, or, uh, Battlefield 3 end game coming out next month like right now there's just there's nothing that like, I'm so excited about to actually play <laughs> well except for like your entire backlog of Steam games but I want the new stuff <laughs> yeah exactly but uh yeah so I, I'm, I'm kind of in the same position I mean I'm playing Skyrim now but um you know I could drop that like a hot potato if <laughs> Daisy came out <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm actually playing Dragonborn honest. and enjoying that a lot yeah I don't really care um <laughs> <laughs> I bought hard fire and I, I don't know how to do that so I'm not going to have a house I'll just do what I normally do I'll kill someone and take theirs um, you're good people anyway, I know aren't I <laughs> want me to come visit you buddy um, <laughs> yeah anyway, I, I, I can demonstrate the, those uh, the soft tips for you <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, well clarification soft tips are bullets guys <laughs> uh, see these are just better without context here you? you keep adding context uh, I don't know about that. Um, that. That's all for us this week. Yeah, uh, that, that's probably time. a good place to stop. <laughs> we should just stop now. Now is good. Cut the feed. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.